Good morning. We're on chapter 20 of Crenshaw. You'll hear the fish tank water in the background and maybe the guinea pigs chirping. It's called weeking. Chapter 20. When the minivan was packed, we stood in the parking lot. Nobody wanted to get in. Why don't I drive, Tom, said my mom. You were in a lot of pain this morning. I'm fine, my dad said firmly. Fit as a fiddle, whatever that means. My mom strapped Robin into her car seat and we climbed into the, mini into the minivan. The seats were hot from the sun. <clears throat> this is only for a few days, my mom said, adjusting her sunglasses. Two weeks tops, my dad said, maybe three or four. We just need to catch up a little. My mom was using her, there's nothing wrong voice, so I knew something was really wrong. Pretty soon, we'll find a new apartment. It's my cat. <laughs> I liked our house, I said. Apartments are nice too, my mom said. I don't get why we just can't stay. It's complicated, my dad said. You'll understand when you're older, Jackson, said my mom. Play Wiggles, Robin yelled, squirming in her car seat. She loved the Wiggles, a group that wrote silly songs for kids. First, a little hitting the road music, Robin, said my dad, then Wiggles. He slipped a CD into the car player. It was one of my mom and dad's favorite singers. His name was B.B. King. My mom and dad kind of uh, like a kind of music called blues. In the blues song, somebody's sad about something, like maybe they broke up with their girlfriend or lost all their money or they missed a train to a faraway place. But the weird thing is, when you hear the songs, it makes you feel happy. You feel happy. My dad makes up a lot of crazy blues songs. Robin's favorite was, Ain't no PB in my PB and J. <coughs> Mine was called, Downside Up Vampire Bat Boogie about a bat who couldn't sleep upside down like bats are supposed to do. I'd never heard of B.B. King, never heard of the B.B. King song my dad had chosen to play. It was about how nobody loved this guy except his mother. <laughs> <coughs> What's he mean about how even his mom could be jiving him, Dad? Jiving means lying. It's funny, see, because your mom and dad always love you. Except when you don't floss, said my mom. I was quiet for a while. Do kids always have to love their moms and dads, I asked. I caught my dad's reflection in the rearview mirror. He looked back at me with, with a question in his eye. Put it this way, he said. You can be mad at someone and still love them with all your heart. We pulled out of the driveway. Aretha sat between Robin and me. She was only a few months old and still had her puppy soft fur and clumsy paws. Our neighbor, Mr. Sierra, was cutting yellow roses from his garden. We are, we'd already said official goodbyes. He waved and, wa and we waved back, like we were on our way to the Grand Canyon or Disney World. <laughs> Does Mr. Sierra have a cat? I asked, a really big cat. Just Mabel, my mom answered, the chihuahua with an attitude. Why? I glanced back at the rear windshield, but it was blocked by boxes and bags. No reason. I said, my dad cranked up the volume on B.B. King, who was still pretty sure nobody loved him, including his mom. Aretha cocked her head and howled. She liked to sing along, especially to the blues, although she liked the wiggles too. We drove a few blocks. My lower lip quivered, but I didn't cry. My mom sighed softly. Let the adventure begin, she said. <clears throat> Chapter 21. See that cat, kitty girl? There's a little cat silhouette there, just like you. If you ever have to live in your car, you're going to have some problems with feet, especially if you're stuck in there with your little sister and your mom and your dad and your puppy and your imaginary friend. There are many kinds of feet problems. Stinky dad feet. The magic marker smell of nail polish on your mom's toes because she says, <coughs> that she still wants to look nice, so please deal with it. Sister feet kicking you, just as you, fa you are falling asleep. The scratchy surprise of dog feet trying to wake you up. Imaginary friend feet, you're not imaginary, tiptoeing on your head. I thought hard about feet problems. Finally, I came up with a plan. 
What's the worst thing that can happen is how I figured it. What's the worst that can happen is how I figured it. What I did is I looked at, I took a cardboard TV box we found behind Walmart. I smooshed it flat. I drew on the outside of the box and the inside too. <coughs> I only had three markers and one dried out when the cat fell under the back seat. So it was pretty much red dogs with blue eyes and blue cats with red eyes. I put stars on the, on the inside. They seemed like a good thing to think about before you fall asleep. I wrote, Kip out Jackson's rum on the top, K-E-P. <laughs> Mom said, too bad we were, we had to leave our dictionary behind. Dad said, if only it really was rum. My night, uh, every night I opened up the box and slipped my sleeping bag inside. When I crawled inside, I felt like a caterpillar in a cocoon. It was almost like my, my old room where I could think about uh, think without anyone bugging me. When Robin kicked me in her sleep, she hit the box, which is not exactly the same thing as kicking me. Unfortunately, Aretha liked to sleep with me, so it could get a little dog breathy. <laughs> also, the box didn't help much with the stinky dad feet. I knew we were lucky because we had our old Honda minivan, which had lots of room. I met a kid who lived for almost a whole year in one of those VW cars. It was red and round like a ladybug, and just about as tiny. The poor kid had to sleep sitting up, squished between his two little sisters. Oh. Another reason we were lucky was because my sleeping box was just decoration. Some people actually live in boxes on the street. That's sad. <clears throat> I wasn't looking on the bright side. It's better to have a big car than a little one when you're living in, in it, and it's better to have a box in a car than a box on a street. Those were just facts. I wasn't like my dad who kept saying we weren't homeless. We were just car camping. Oh, so he's remembering a really difficult time in this book, Crenshaw. And my cat was enjoying the story too. She's not imaginary, but she's big. So that was uh, chapter 21. We'll take it up with chapter 22 next time.